Zookeepers. What are some secrets that zoos don't want the rest of us to know? My wife's best friend was a zookeeper for the primates. We took a behind the scenes tour of the holding facilities. Big primates are actually scary when up close. The orangutan that we got to see up close could move so fast and was so strong it was unsettling. Most zoos don't have any secrets worth telling. The staff takes care of the animals the best they can. Sometimes animals live a really long time. Sometimes they die prematurely for one reason or another. When premature deaths happen, zookeepers take it really hard. Oh, and even though all zookeepers love animals and take animal welfare seriously, all zookeepers hate PETA. I've been working in zoos and aquariums for about five years. Not as long as most keepers, but I will tell you some stuff. More animals than you realize are there because they have nowhere else to be. Mistreated and former circus animals, illegal exotic pet confiscation, former lab control animals, nuisance wildlife animals. Some have active wildlife rehabilitation centers. Others are born in captivity, generally in other zoos, but we don't take any more out of the wild. Zoos are really important to connecting the public to animals they wouldn't normally see and teaching them about the environment. Zoos that are regulated by national organization have very strict care rules. In America, we have the AZA. Any organization not accredited by them does not fulfill standard care needed for their animals. Keepers make bad money and generally have to have years of unpaid experience to even get the position in the first place. The only reason that they work in this field is because they really care about these animals. Zoos are in a current movement to really rethink the mental welfare of animals. Most organizations work to give lots of mental stimulation by adding enrichment items to help stimulate natural behaviors and keep animals physically and mentally healthy. Some zoos are honestly still behind on this, but many are in the forefront of animal behavior and well-being studies and working to make a difference. Actual former zookeeper here. How much we love our animals. Zoos these days are really trying to create this distance between human and animals, emphasizing that these animals aren't pets and downplaying the emotional connection with them. This is because of the criticism that zoos are cruel. In order to battle this, zoos make the animals sound like research subjects and that it's not cruel to have them in captivity because of the necessity to save their species. That part is actually true. Not having animals in captivity is necessary. We'll need to help populate all the species we're driving to extinction. But anyways, to us keepers, those animals are our lives. We call them by their name, even if they don't officially have a name. Some zoos try not to give the animals official names in order to seem more scientific. We love to pet them, hold them, cuddle them. We talk about them like they're our children. If you get a group of zookeepers together, we will gab about our animals just like old ladies at the nursing home talk about their grandbabies. Keeper one. I've been hand raising Muffin the serval kitten. She's learning how to be on a leash. Keeper two. You must be so proud. Ralph the elephant got an infection last week and we were so scared, but he's doing okay. Keeper three. We shifted the tropical birds from one enclosure to the other, and now they're all turned around. So I've been going in each day to show them where their food is. That's almost word for word a conversation I once had at the lunch table. Zookeepers care so much about our animals. To clarify, that doesn't mean we advocate for exotic pets. We definitely don't, seeing as many of our animals came from horrible homes where they were owned as pets. We care about the conservation of these animals as well. We know that zoos are essential on multiple levels. As a final note, there are huge powerful organizations regulating zoos to make sure the animals are happy and healthy. If you made this question hoping to reveal something cruel or sad, you probably won't find it. Two that I haven't seen mentioned. A lot of safety fences are based on guesses and have changed dramatically over the years. Zoos keep careful track of how far animals can jump and then adjust their fences based on what other zoos see. When one annoyed tiger jumps across a 33-foot moat or over a 16-foot fence, everyone adjusts things. The staff also needs to keep the people from attacking the animals. If an animal attacks a person, it's almost guaranteed that the person was taunting the animal, which means the zoo wasn't doing its job to keep the animals safe. I had a manager once that previously worked in a zoo. One day I asked her, so what happens to the elephants, giraffes, and all the big animals when they die? She goes, well, someone is called in. They chop them up into smaller bits, and then they're disposed of. Aww. Not a zoo, but I worked at a prominent aquarium for a bit, and these are a few things I learned that people might be surprised about. Nothing crazy, though. 
Fish, specifically marine, don't understand confined space and will kill or injure themselves either from jumping the exhibit or, for the faster ones, running into the glass at high speeds. The aquarium I worked at disposed of dead fish by making sure they ended up in a landfill. They didn't sell them at market or feed them to other animals. Most people commonly overlook what the aquarist or keepers work really hard on or take pride in. Sure, the general public may think the local colorful fish species is amazing and deserves all the attention, but the algae behind that fish is of a species that's never done well in aquariums before and has never been displayed in this area. Finally, when you work in an aquarium in front of the public, you are on display as much as the animals are, and people make a lot of assumptions about what we can and can't do. No, I can't retrieve that plastic water bottle you just dropped in the ocean right now. I know it's trash and that it could harm wildlife, and that I and the place I work at have a strong pro-environmental image. I just have a safety position right now watching over two of my co-workers who are in the water and I can't and won't abandon my position. Sorry. But I don't want anyone to take this as an oh my job sucked, never working at an aquarium or zoo. I did and I loved every day of it. Especially my job and I hope to work at one again someday soon. I was an intern at a zoo for a season on the weekends and one day made for a great story. The South America enclosure had sloths, golden lion tamarins, capybaras, and a few other animals all living together peacefully. One day, a golden lion tamarind decided to annoy one of the sloths and kept harassing the sloth. The sloth tolerated it for a small while, then turned around and bit the tamarind's face. There was blood on the sloth and the tamarind, and it was grisly. This all happened in front of the guests. The keepers had to go in immediately and retrieve both of them. They were checked for injuries. The golden lion tamarind had an eye hanging from its socket. He could no longer be on display. I don't know what ended up happening to him. The sloth was cleaned and put back. The guests all had questions about what the commotion was, and we weren't allowed to tell them what happened. There was some made-up story we had to feed them, and I hated it. The real story was so much cooler and more educational, but we had to keep up the image of the zoo being perfect and peaceful, where nothing ever goes wrong. Not a zookeeper, but I am a student currently studying for my undergrad in applied animal biology, who just finished her internship with a marine mammal rescue center, helping rehabilitate orphan seal pups for re-release into the wild. A couple of things. Seals smell awful, and the smell is extremely pungent and settles into your clothes and your hair. You smell like seals for days. Every day after a shift, I felt like I had to go home and burn my clothes. Although cute, don't forget that these little guys are wild animals, and they can bite. Not a day didn't go by that I at least narrowly avoided getting chomped on. One of my coworkers actually had to go to the hospital because her joints swelled with fluid after one bite. I got bites on my hand, arm, and another colleague of mine even got one dangerously close to the lady parts. In all honesty, it was kind of scary. The fact that there was a high chance of them biting you didn't mean you weren't expected to still stick your hand in and swab their wounds or give them fluids or tube feed them. When I first started, I was being too hesitant and taking too long and my coworker actually said to me, you can't be scared of them. You have to just do it. If they bite you, it doesn't hurt that bad. She was wrong. It hurts. Something rather entertaining is that unlike doctors or nurses caring for human patients, animals have no idea what you are saying to them. Consequently, you can verbally abuse them as much as you want, and it wasn't uncommon to hear fellow co-workers grunting while trying to lift a particularly heavy seal for weighing and muttering, Oh my god, you are such a fat jerk. Definitely made the job more fun. Sea turtles are lazy, mean jerks. I worked at a marine center for a while with turtles. When feeding them, if you don't put the food directly in their mouth at an angle where it slid down their throats for them, they would let it drop and then be upset about it. You would have to skim it out of the tank and keep trying. I would have to dive down to clean the 190,000 gallon tank and the turtle in there would bite me. He was the only species of carnivorous sea turtle with the crushing jaw, so his bite would hurt. We did turtle rehab and those lived in tanks out back. They were like big doughboy pools that had to be drained scrubbed, and refilled all without removing the turtle. This one turtle would wait until there were only a few inches of water, then float over and get suctioned down to the drain so I couldn't push the poopy water out and thus couldn't refill the tank. This is a 150 pound turtle that I can't move alone. I'm in knee high waders, sweating in 100 degree heat with 95% humidity, and this turtle was eyeballing me knowing I couldn't do a damn thing about it. As someone that worked at the Topeka Zoo for a few years,
years, we had a vet that was an idiot and overdosed quite a few animals, including one of the black leopards I took care of. Nothing like coming in at five in the morning and seeing one of the animals you loved dead. She was later fired after a few incidents. She sued for her job back and won. Here's another one. We had two male tigers. They were brothers. We sent one to Kansas City and got a female to breed with the other one. The female had a history of violence and the male was very aggressive. For months I said they were not ready to be put together in the yard. They were kept separate, one inside and one outside at all times. The first day they let them out together in public, big party to celebrate this, the male killed the female in front of the public. That was when I decided to quit and walked away from being a zookeeper. Now I work on cars. A different visitor will shout, I like to move it, move it, at the lemurs at least 20 times a day. It isn't amusing or original. There is a large fridge filled with dead animals somewhere in the zoo. There is also an equally large incinerator. A fight will break out between the chimps most days. They're vicious. Most zoos list the species they keep on their website. Check it before you visit to avoid disappointment. The amount of people who will complain about the lack of certain animals is unreal. We train the animals as best we can, but if you can't see something, there's nothing we can do to convince it out for you. Growing up, we had a kangaroo escape from the circus. It was on the news at noon and the location was about two miles from us. Me and my sister were outside playing in a field, lots of weeds, and suddenly the roo jumped over my sister and took off. We called the cops and they recovered it alive about a mile down the road. 